believe that, stand and sing it with the choir, please. He is here. going to sing it one more time while you welcome and greet those around you and tell them how glad you are to see them this morning. Since you're standing, and if you're able to continue doing so, please do so as we sing about standing on the promises. you've stood on the promises, you may be seated. <laughs> and it's my privilege to welcome you and to thank you for being here. As you have probably surmised, we're having a little cooling problem, but we are trying to address that even as uh, I'm standing up here. So you gentlemen, if you feel at some time you may need to remove your jacket, then um, remove your jacket. But we're glad to see you here, and we have some of our folks back with us. They uh, ran out of money in Florida and came on back home for the summer, and so. Uh, and Bobby, we're glad to see you down from Louisiana, um, Amelia, wherever you live up there. Louisiana. Louisiana. All right. And everyone else, of course, we're delighted that you're here. Please keep in mind the opportunities of this coming week on Wednesday evening, of course. We'll be back for our prayer and time and choir rehearsal. And then, I believe, Brother Carl, y'all are meeting on Thursday night? 
Can you have somebody available next Sunday, please? It might be to be it, it'll be closed. <laughs> well, what they usually do, Carl, before they get some money, someone, the members of the committee just take a Sunday. Each one takes a Sunday and preaches that Sunday. So if you don't have someone, next Sunday will be your Sunday, my friend. <laughs> Here, you're number two. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. And then next, speaking of next Sunday, Next Sunday, of course, is Memorial Day weekend, and we always do something special music-wise and sermon-wise and otherwise, and so we hope that you will keep that in mind, please. And we see if there are birthdays or anniversaries with birthdays on this side. Yes, I see a hand. Becky. I have one, so you had one or having? I would have one, so. You're having one. Brother Craig. Tomorrow, will she start getting uh, uh, Social Security now? Or? Not quite. She just takes a little tax money out of the drawer every week. Right? All right, over on this side, birthdays. Yes, I see it. Okay, Connie. She had one Friday, but she's not as old as I am. Lucy had, had one or having, Lucy? Had. Had, past tense. In the balcony, I see a hand. June the 1st. And when are you leaving for Haiti, uh, Cynthia? What is that? 29th. Uh, Cynthia's leaving for a week. Eight days on a mission trip to Haiti. All right, anniversaries anywhere? Yes, Mike Slaw. Had or having? Will have. Will have. How many years? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. That's good. In the balcony, any, any <coughs> choir, any bar, anyone, no one? <coughs> All right, Tara. As we come to our prayer time, mindful of special needs in the community and even beyond, uh, some good news on the agenda. While I'm talking to you, the family has gone to Richmond to pick Junior Kent up to bring him home. One month solid, one month today, he's been in the hospital and plans hoping to come home uh, today. Uh, so we announced a couple of Sundays ago that uh, Leon Wright passed away. This past week, Leon Wright's grandson, whose name was Brandon Bates, relatively young man, passed away. If you, 30 how many? 36. You and him were the same age, weren't you? Yeah, right. <laughs> Next Sunday, I'll be preaching about lying about your age. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, here is another announcement. If you take the Richmond Times Dispatch, which some of you do, and you read the obituary, which some of you do, you'll find that Donald Bowen's name is in there today. Uh, that is uh, a misprint. Well, not really. It's just to remind you there's another Donald Bowen somewhere or another. And I guess there's, that's good news that there's one less of them uh, as, of, uh, as of this time. But that is, uh, it's not me, of course. These things said, let us join in prayer as we pray together. Father, we thank you for the day. Thank you for the blessings of it since last we were together. Thank you for the rain, in spite of the fact that it was quite uh, extensive in some places. But the sun is shining today and the flowers are blooming and life goes on. And for that we are grateful. We pray that you will be with us in the uh, memorial service for Dars Hall this afternoon. 
and that will be a testimony and a witness to all who are present and a blessing and encouragement to the members of the family and all who are here. We pray that you will be with us as we continue down the road with the Pastor Search Committee and that your blessings will be upon them in a special way. We pray for the people who are working on the air conditioning system that they'll get us going and things will be ready for the service at two o'clock today. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus, amen. We continue as we stand to sing together, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Not the new home to anyone, we stand and sing it together. when I recognized the guest, uh, I didn't recognize you, and Gordon have a guest, out-of-town guest. We do, my brother Peter is here from Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Uh -huh. Did he ride a horse here or come in the car? No, I think he rode one of those big birds. Oh, one of the big birds. <laughs> Ryan Hall, lead us in prayer. We're getting out of seriousness here. Dear kind and most gracious Heavenly Father, we once again just want to thank you for the opportunity that you've given us and the blessings of this day. We thank you, Father, for the opportunities that we gather together in this place and fellowship. We praise you, Father, for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us. Father, as we enter into this portion of the service, that we give back a portion that you have blessed us with. We pray, Father, that you would bless it, multiply it, may be used for the furtherment of thy kingdom. Father, we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, and you may be seated. As we prepare for the message of the hour, our choir will share with us a wonderful testimony and song, Just Over in Glory Land. It's appropriate that we sing it this morning in light of the funeral service here, memorial service here at 2 o'clock for Doris Hall this afternoon. for reminding us of a great truth. For the truth of the matter is that there are some things we do not understand for the time being. Amen? Amen. 
but we'll understand it better by and by. Our scripture reading is a very familiar passage of scripture this morning, at least by Old Testament standards, taken from the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah. I'll break in at verse 28, and I'll break out at verse 31, which is the end of the chapter. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Have you not known, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, and the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. This is the part of the text that applies to this morning specifically. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. These words from the prophet Isaiah. As you are aware, the Bible is a book of many promises. If we added them all up, there would probably be hundreds or probably be thousands of promises found in the Word of God. And since they are here, we are encouraged, and this is the way he begins, we are encouraged to stand on those promises as the song reminds us to do so. Our promise today is a very special one as found from the pen and the heart and the mind of the prophet Isaiah, found in chapter 40 of his prophecy, it reads, as you shall see, in fact, read it with me, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. In order to understand what he's saying in these words here, it is imperative that we try to understand the words used. And you will notice that here he begins by saying, those that wait upon the Lord, those are the ones to whom the promises are addressed in this 40th chapter of Isaiah. Now, I mention this because there is room for misunderstanding at this point, and it's often, that misunderstanding often is expressed at this point. For example, there are some people that say, well, I'm not doing very much for the Lord now. I'm just sort of waiting on him to tell me what to do. Well, that's not exactly what the word means here when he says they that wait upon the Lord. In other words, when he uses the term, they that wait upon the Lord, my favorite seminary professor, who happened to be the professor of Old Testament, in reference to these words in Isaiah 40, gave this statement or this definition of wait, when he said to wait is in expectant dependency upon God. In other words, we're looking to God to give us the guidance, direction, and the blessing that we need. It really has, when used in this way, it has a twofold meaning, waiting upon God. It means that we have confidence in God's control, that we're waiting for Him to speak, to lead us, to reveal to us, or whatever it may be, as to the decision to be made or the response to be given. Ethel Waters, the uh, rather well-known uh, gospel song singer, once used to sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. And that's exactly what he is talking about here. Cora Ten Boone, who also gets in on the picture, and she's the German lady who went through all of the ordeals of the of uh, what happened in Germany back in those sad, sad days. Uh, put it this way, when she said, 
To wait means to nestle in God's love and goodness, not struggle against his will and his way. In other words, when God reveals something to us, then we're willing to do what he wants us to do, even though we don't understand why or for what purpose he may, want, he may be wanting us to do that. And so to wait upon God is to have confidence in God's control, to commit our lives to his control, trusting that he's going to do what he needs to do or wants to do in our lives. But there's a second meaning or additional meaning to what it means to wait upon God. It means not only to have confidence in God's control, but it means to surrender to God's control. Now some people may say, I have confidence in God's control, but they don't ever do anything about it. And so when we say we have confidence in God's control, it means to has surrendered all that we have, all that we're doing, our decision-making, our processes, that we are willing to surrender them to God's control. One writer put it this way, believe that God is, loves us so much, he's sent his son, knows all about us, and commit our all to him, present, past, and future to him. Now keep that definition in mind and look again at what Isaiah said or what God said to Isaiah in chapter 40 of his prophecy. Those that wait upon the Lord. In other words, for God to speak to us, to lead us, to reveal his will, to define his purpose, those that wait upon him in this way, then they will mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and they'll not be weary. They'll walk, and they won't faint. Now, when we talk about waiting, when I use the term, if you didn't know what the sermon was going to be about, and I'll give you that credit at this point, but after I get through, I hope you won't say, I had no idea what you were talking about. But when we talk about waiting, what do we usually think about? The waiter or the waitress where? in the restaurant, okay? And so they come along at, to the table, and most of the time they have a little pad or uh, something, paper in their hand and a pen, and they ask, uh, what, do you, uh, what would you have to drink? And you order that, and 30 minutes later they come with a glass of tea or something or another. <laughs> and then they say, you want to place your order, and you say, yes. Now, and you place your order, and 30 minutes later, you get some fried chicken and potatoes or something like that. I'm being facetious because that's not true of all restaurants, but it can be true of some sometimes. But the, what we usually think of, a waiter, you know, they're there, they're there to uh, help us, to serve us. Now, what if you went to the restaurant, and you sat down at the table, and the waiter or the restaurant or the waitress was sitting over the, to there to the time, talking or playing cards or reading the paper or just sitting there doing nothing, then what would you think? Well, it wouldn't take you long to think because after a while you'd get up and do what? Walk out. Okay, because uh, that's our understanding of waiting upon God. Uh, and to wait upon Him just as the waiter or the waitress is there to serve and to please us, then to wait upon God means that we are available to worship and serve and to please Him. Let me, uh, and that's the goal, to what, that's what pleases Him. When we come to, not to sit over here and say, well, I, I'm waiting for God to lead me. Well, he, that may be true. But uh, when he does lead us, then we, we need to be willing to do what he asks us to do. The illustration of the waiter or the waitress is clearly illustrated. They are there to carry out our will or desire. And when we wait upon God, and that's what Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord, 
shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and they won't faint. To wait upon God means that we, just as the waiter or the waitress makes themselves available to us to get our drink and to get our meal and to clean up the dirty dishes, that we come to God and say, God, here I am. What is it you want me to do? Now, God doesn't have to hit us up beside the head and say, I want you to do thus and so. Sometimes he lets us know what he wants us to do by simply seeing a need that needs to be done. And when we see the need, then that should be sufficient. I told some people a while ago, it's in today's new newspaper, J, I think it's J.J. Watt is a football player. He plays for one of the Texas teams. Not, not the, um, what's that team? I can't ever think of what their name is. It's down in De De Dallas. I don't know who they are. But anyway, in fact, I think it's a high school team, really. But anyway, it's not that he doesn't play for them. But you know what he has done? The 10 people that were killed in the school shooting in Texas, J.J. Ward say, I'll pay for the funeral for every one of them. Now, God didn't need to slap him up beside the head and say, J.J., these people, some of them can't afford a decent funeral. He saw a need, and he responded to it. That's what it means to wait upon God. God, I'm here, I'm available. I don't know what you want me to do, but as soon as I know what it is, I'm going to do it. You may say, well, uh, there's so-and-so that needs to be visited. There's this errand that needs to be run. There's this um, air conditioner that needs to be fixed. And so we just make ourselves available to him. Now, I want you to notice, and this is very important in understanding what this passage is all about. I want you to notice the promises that God gives us in his word concerning uh, that accompany the word waiting. We've learned or seen what our part is and now what God's part is that uh, as far as the waiting is concerned and see what happens there. Uh, God promises renewed strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Renew their strength. Now most of us in the room, not some of these young people, they got so much energy they don't know what to do with it. But uh, some of us are on the other side of the spectrum. Sometimes we feel a little tired, don't we? I mean, don't we? Yeah, sure. Sometimes we feel a, a little tired. But he said, God will give you strength. Strength to do what? To do what he wants us to do. And so we realize that. And we find that because we were looking to God, trusting God, God, what is it you want me to do? And God said, this is what I want you to do. And lo and behold, we begin doing it and we find out that God makes it possible for us to do it. He gives us renewed strength. But that's not all. God promises to give us renewed vision. This doesn't come out, listen carefully, this doesn't come out in the text proper, but it's embedded in the words that are there. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like a what? You know what an eagle is known for as much as anything else? It's, vis it's eyesight, it's vision. I read that an eagle from several hundred feet up in the air can see a mouse or a rat on the, in the grass down below. Able to see things. He said, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall, re they shall have renewed strength and they shall have renewed vision to see, to see a need of someone in the hospital or someone in the nursing home or someone at home or wherever it may be, to see a need, to recognize that it's there. That's when the strength comes to do it. 
And then, most of all, or not most of all, but clearly all, God promises renewed enthusiasm. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run, not be weary. They'll walk, and they won't faint. In other words, God makes it possible to do things that we really didn't think we could do. Now, I'm not the oldest person here this morning. I don't think, am I Ethel? No, I'm not the oldest one. But I'm pushing it, and Webster's not here, and so I'm, if he was here, I know I'd be in the clear. But uh, it, it surprises me, really. It's really a surprise to me that God lets me do what I do, really. I mean, I was born in 1934. Now, you do the math. And if you do the math, you'll find out that I'm 83 years old. I'm up at 5 o'clock every morning, in bed at a reasonable time. I'm here at the church at 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock every morning. And yet, I find that I'm able to do it. I don't, I don't accept any credit for it whatsoever. I just, it needs to be done, so I go ahead and do it. Finding strength to do things that we never realized that we were able to do. And I don't take any credit for it. Because one of these days, there's going to be another Donald Bowen in that obituary column, you understand. And then it will be too late to do anything about it. So, we have the promise from God, they that wait upon him shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and they'll not faint. Now listen to this. This is the most precious part of this whole passage of Scripture. Notice how it reads. He did not say that they, those that wait upon the Lord will be able to walk a long distance and then they'll be able to run and then they'll be able to fly like an eagle. What did he say? Those that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings like the eagle. Then they'll fly, they'll run, and then they will walk and not faint. Now, I point that out for a very simple reason. Every church, no matter where it is, no matter the circumstances or the conditions, every church has always had those who fly through. You know what I'm getting ready to say? I mean, they come along and they set the world on fire for six months and then they're gone. And then there are those that run. I mean, you bring up something, oh yes, I'm for it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And they do it. Until when? The next time that something needs to be done. And then they're nowhere to be found. In other words, what seems to be a digression, flying and running and walking. The prophet puts it at the top of the list. They that wait upon the Lord, they'll be able to fly like the eagle. Then they'll be able to run like the deer. But in the end, they will keep right on going, regardless of the challenge or the test at hand. Isn't that wonderful? It ought to be wonderful for every person here that's above Ethel's age. Uh, wonderful that at the later stages of life, God, we still have the opportunity to serve God. Someday some of you will be as old as better law, and maybe you'll still be able to sing in the choir. I don't know. But that's what I'm, we need to realize that God ain't through with us yet, right? No matter what the conditions or the circumstances may be. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, mount up with wings like the eagle, run and not weary, walk and not faint. Now let me point out the most important thing of all. 
This is not evident in, in it as you read the text, but it's here. In other words, the key word in this entire promise, give me the key word. The secret. They that wait upon the Lord, what's the next word? Shall renew their strength. You know what the word renew means? Exchange. Where do we get the strength to do what God really wants us to do? Where do we get it? From Him. In other words, God takes our weakness and exchanges His strength for our weakness. It's not something that we can take pride in or boast of or I'm so old and I can still, you know, I can still run or I can still do 40 laps around the ball field or I can still do whatever. But God takes our weakness and renews it by giving us his strength. And that's the promise that's given to those that wait upon the Lord. And the prophet says that when we do this, we, we can be more than conquerors. We can do things that we never thought possible or that we were able to do. And so, there is a secret formula for victory in serving and living for the Lord. God's secret formula. Isaiah 40, 31. Now, don't you forget it. And if you don't know it by heart, you say, I can't memorize any longer. There's some things I forget also. <laughs> A lot of things I forget. But anyway, this is one verse you've got to remember. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and they'll not faint. Give me the last word that goes on this slide. One more click. Okay, I'm sorry. The click didn't come. All right. In other words, this is God's promise to us for serving and living for him. Waiting upon, trusting, allowing him. Exchanging our weakness for his strength. Y'all got it in the balcony? Well, one does. I don't know about the rest of them up there. but uh, That's the message of the hour. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. It's so precious. Sometimes we read it and say, that's beautiful. But how does it apply to me? And I just pray that the word will come through loud and clear. And we'll realize that you are willing to exchange your strength for our weakness if we're willing to wait upon you, which means to make ourselves available to you, that you might work in us, through us, and upon us to accomplish your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, More Love to Thee, O Christ, More Love to Thee, as always, a closing hymn, hymn of invitation, hymn of commitment, hymn of response, hymn for whatever may be represented in our life here today. We stand, please, and we'll sing it together.
thank you again for your presence and participation and listening ears. If you think about it, remember the memorial service here at 2 o'clock this afternoon. And pray that the guys will get things cooling for us to make that as um, meaningful as possible. Let us pray. Father, we go in Jesus' name, claiming the promise of Isaiah 40, 31. And all the people said it together. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen.